Hi everybody. A quick one. Just food for thought. Three questions that keep hovering around my brain. One of them is are Africans inherently corrupt? Because we all clearly know that the African continent is grappling and crumbling at the weight of corruption from south to north, from east to west. At the center, it's even bad. The yoke is boiling. Some guy just organized an election and voted himself back to power after a mutiny in his own country. So we know that it's a hot pot. The, this whole place is burning with all sorts of difficulties from people changing constitutions to promote life, presidency, to others just grabbing large sums of money. Ben Ali, when he was running away from Tunisia to go and to safe havens in, uh, in, in, in Europe, he left with gold and uh, you know bags of cash. Yeah, I've also heard of stories of Gaddafi uh, at the time of his escape. He had, he had bags of gold and, 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 and dollars and cash. And it's not the first time this has happened. I mean, Mobutu Seseko, Bokasa of Central Africa Republic, Idi Amin Dada. I mean, the list is endless. My friend Jay-Z, Jacob Zuma has been... Uh, you know, he's, he has all this mess with a big, nice retirement package he's prepared for himself. But that said, if the question that comes up is, are Africans inherently corrupt? The second question is, if not, then a black race not capable of modern civilization or of embracing modern market and political systems, you know, to enhance social welfare in African communities? And if the answer to the first question is a yes, then the question is, at what point do, does Africa or do Africans become inherently corrupt? Because looking to the to history i mean when you look back you realize that there were very powerful communities in the african society long before colonialism societies such as the great songhai empire we all know about mansa musa and how great he was and the richest man to ever existed of course we can discuss the politics of mansa musa and whether it was realistic or not but mansa musa organized Mali, Songhai, Mali Empire, and these were powerful. And Timkutu was a center for civilization uh, until recently, of course, when the, some guys decided they must burn down all the history of such a great city. But these places were, were centers of civilization. Egypt is just too much. We can say everything about Egypt. The kingdom of Tarseti, along the Nile Valley, this... These guys are known for built the very first pyramids and creating a civilization that was flowing towards the Mediterranean like the Nile does. So this, this president of good governance, of society organization, Buganda Kingdom in Uganda, I love to use that one, the, 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 the degree, they had courts, they had a system of governance, those important organization and many others the Oyo Empire, the, the the Ashanti, the Zulu, all these kingdoms were organized in very representative ways, ways that had there were laws in place, the systems of justice in place, there was documentation of what was going on, and societies were existing in quite you know, stable ways. So at what point does the African become inherently corrupt? If the answer to is Africa 
inherently corrupt is yes. But if the answer is no, then the question is, are we incapable of embracing the systems of governance and markets that exist today to improve our welfare and make things better for ourselves? That is the sort of question that we must start asking ourselves. Because if we are not biologically inferior, like of course Thomas Jefferson uh, thought uh, that, or used as an excuse that we were probably biologically inferior, if we are not, and we actually ain't biologically inferior, I would think I'm biologically inferior for just because I wear a black skin. But if indeed we're not biologically inferior, that means we can understand modern market systems, modern civilization, uh, modern political systems, and we should be able to use them to, to change the situation at home. Uh, if we're not inherently corrupt, because we are not, as how history shows we're an organized people, we're people who could organize ourselves into small groups and succeed and live normally, and we had respect for women, we had, we had well-organized systems, and we had a civilization that predates all civilizations. So at what point do we stop being those people and we become Mugabe and we become Bokasa and we become Ubuntu Seseko and we become, uh, you know, you can name it Daniel Arab Moy and all these this guys who have really painted corruption across Africa, sunny batches of this world, name them. But we need to ask ourselves that question. In my last video, I discussed about the system of capitalism and democracy and how alien they were to our traditional systems and how the two were not well, they were not compatible and there needed to be ways to model societies so that they could embrace capitalism and, 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 and democracy. And I think if we try to answer these three questions, are Africans inherently corrupt? Africans biologically inferior and incapable of you know, embracing the civilization, modern civilization that is embedded in, in capitalist market systems and democratic political systems, or the, the, the third question being whether we, I, know, I mean those are the three questions, but if we ask ourselves these questions and try to reply them or ask them, Promptly, we can find the answers as to why the situation is the way it is today. Mm. And I have tried to answer those questions before, and uh, I've debated with a few, a couple of colleagues on this. Of course, debates are usually very difficult because along the way people lose the way and they, 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 they lose the focus and start to meander and answer many other questions. But I think if we went, if we had a discussion, taking each question at a time and trying to diagnose, bisect and see exactly what the challenge is, probably our generation can start answering the question on corruption because corruption has all the bad things you can write about. It's, it's, a, it's a whole talk of its own. I mean, we can discuss all the negative impacts about it, but should we embrace it? Should we embrace it? And say, okay, fine, it is our system, and so ours is a corrupt system, and therefore we must stay with it because it's harming us. The statistics look terrible education, employment, social welfare. We, we, we look very bad, and this is just not statistics. Because even in reality, when you, I am a farmer, and I, I, I rub shoulders with people who stay in the rural areas of the country, and you can see that the poverty and and, and, and the illiteracy is at the highest level. And it's been so many years. I agree with those who say 50 years of independence is a lot of time for us to have had an impact. Why don't we have the impact that we're supposed to have had? And then in my next video, I will try and go into one or two of these questions so that we can discuss exactly why we seem to be stagnated in, where, in the place where we are. Thank you very much for listening to me again.